An Unfortunate Daily Occurrence Written by Little Big Pony And published on the 17th of December, 2019 And what do you two say? Thank you, Mrs. Bonbon! Thanks, Mrs. Bonbon! Two foals, still young enough to be blank flanks, bolted away. Each held a big bag of candy in their mouths, a bag which would be, no doubt, empty by the end of the day. No running, the foal's father said, giving the two a stern glare. The children, of course, ignored him. The filly attempted a skid to a stop as she drew close to the door, only for her to slip. Her brother, running behind her as fast as his little hoofs could take him, slammed into her flank. Both of them tumbled, still somehow holding onto their treats before they hit the door with a sharp thud. The father let out a sigh, giving Bon Bon an apologetic look as he made his way over to them. Both were pulled to their hooves, hushed chiding, carrying across the candy store as the stallion led them through the door. A bell jingled as the door was closed, and no matter how hard she tried, Bon Bon couldn't help but smile. Many in Ponyville thought of her as a grump, and that might have even been true, but she had a soft spot for the kids. There was just something when she saw their eyes light up when she offered them some candy that made this whole job worthwhile. Mm, it made us gig hooves and heads better than monster hunting, that was for sure. Still smiling, she pulled off her apron, setting it onto the counter. It had been another busy day. The foals were off for school and hearth swarming was coming up and it would no doubt only get busier in the coming weeks. If things kept up like this, she might have to actually hire some help. The thought put a pip in the earth pony's step as she walked around the counter. The front door was locked and the store was clean and swept in short order. Next, she checked her inventory, making sure to write down what she'd need to get to the market tomorrow before she opened. It was only then that she let out a sigh. Her work for the day was officially done. She was a free mare that could do whatever the heck she wanted. Maybe her and Lyra could go out to dinner tonight? They had been eating leftovers for two days, and there was supposed to be a new dish at Sugar Cube Corner that was to die for. Bon Bon stood there in the center of her store, smile on her face, picturing a happy, peaceful, content little scene, the two of them sitting at a nice table lit by candles, doing nothing but enjoying the food and each other's company. For a few precious moments, it seemed as if the day was going to end perfectly. Then the music started. It was loud, impossible to ignore, some trashy love song that was popular when she was a blank flank. Bon Bon's smile disappeared as her serenity was shattered into a billion pieces. Bon Bon! Bon Bon looked towards the door and turned away. She wanted to just ignore him, go upstairs, shower, and enjoy her evening as best she could, but she knew the cold shoulder wouldn't work. He'd be out there screaming her name until she opened in the morning. The Earth Pony's ears folded against her skull, and she thought about the grappling hook she had hidden under her bed. She was a pretty good shot with the thing, and she knew the capsule that propelled the hook had enough force in it to knock some pony senseless if she were to, say, aim it at the chest or head. Again, she sighed, shoulders slumped. Alright, let's get this over with. She made her way back towards her door, opening it and poking her head outside. Sure enough, there he was, the biggest pain at her flank this side of Manhattan. The resident Hugh man. He had an overly large boombox over his head, blasting his trashy tunes. Ponies walked around him, unfazed by the display. This wasn't the first time he had done this, and unfortunately it wouldn't be the last. Bon Bon, you sexy goddess of a horse! I see you! The Hugh man shouted as soon as her head was visible. 
Bonbon bon frowned at him, brow furrowed. Turn that music off and go home. I can't, you breathtaking beauty. The human replied, voice barely audible over the music. The day isn't complete without me worshipping the very ground you walk on. I also really need that date we keep talking about, hmm? Yeah? Not interested. Come on, just one date! We can go anywhere you like. It'll be fun! No! Bonbon bon gave him a look that could curdle milk before turning attention to the pony standing to his left. It was Lyra. The love of her life, looking like she was about to walk over and boop her nose because she was turning down the Hugh man's advances. Come on, Bonners, you perfect mare. Give the big guy a chance. Lyra said. He's a nice stallion. He really likes hooves, too. I love hooves, the Hugh man said. I'm pretty sure he'll put out on the first date, too. Just saying. Let me worship the masterpiece that is your body, Bon Bon! No, Bon Bon said. Lyra, get your butt in here. We're going out for dinner. Don't change the subject, Philly. This Hayo man is ripe for the picking. Get your lovely Fanny over here and make an honest stallion out of him! Absolutely not. Why? What? Are you gay? Yes. With you, my wife. Lyra snorted, waving her words away with a hoof. Coward, you know, there are starving, loveless zebras in the Southlands that would love their own Hayo man. Do you two have to do this every day? Every single day? Bon Bon demanded. Do either of you have any shame? No. Nope. Lyra replied without missing a beat. There's no shame in trying to woo the most beautiful mare in Equestria, the human said. I'll do anything to make you mine. He means anything, Bonners. Absolutely anything. Like, you can make him wear socks in public. I do that already, so yeah, you definitely could. He'd let you slap him around too, I bet. Yeah, probably. Maybe you could even stuff something up his butt. I'm not 100% down for that, but I won't give you a hard no. A mare walking by the trio let out a scoff, rolling her eyes. A few stallions chuckled good-naturedly. A group of foals trotted towards them, only to be quickly rounded up and led away by Cheerily, who was giving them all a dirty look. Bon Bon said nothing. In her opinion, there was nothing more that needed to be said in this ridiculous, stupid, dumb situation. So she just glared at the two, hoping that by some miracle they'd get the hint. Lyra, the most beautiful creature that the Earth Pony knew, huffed. Alrighty, I didn't want to have to do this, but looks like I don't have any choice. Her horn glowed. The Hugh man's shirt was torn off and tossed away in a heap as he lifted the boombox high above his head. Bon Bon watched as he took a deep breath and fell onto his knees. Lyra summoned a flower water pail that they used for their garden. Tongue sticking out in concentration, she lifted it over the stallion's head, pouring water down onto him. Bon! With a hop, Bon Bon closed the distance between them and herself. She leapt up and kicked the water pail out of the air, nearly braining some poor mare just walking by. Landing back onto her hooves, she spun around, smacking the Hugh man in the stomach. It wasn't enough to hurt him. Humans seemed to be made out of rocks, their bodies were so dense. But it was hard enough to startle him, shutting him up. Then, with a flick of her tail, she pushed the eject button on the boombox, causing the cassette to fall to the ground. This all happened in less than two seconds. Bonbon bon had moved so quickly and efficiently that neither the human or her wife could react. It took several seconds after Earth Pony had settled down for their brains to even process what happened. That was awesome, hun! Lyra said, a grin exploding across her face. I shut your sweet perfect mouth before I smack bon it! Bon barked. The Hugh man tried to reach for his cassette, which was labeled Lovin' Funky Tunes.
only for the earth pony to kick it away. He made a face, reaching into his pocket and producing another cassette. Its title read, Love and Funky Tunes 2, Electric Boogaloo. I swear, Celestia, if you put that in, I'm kicking you. Bon Bon friend, poking his chest. Get your butt up and go home. She whipped around to her wife. You. Me? What are you? Shut it. Get your butt in the house and get ready. You're taking me out to dinner. Afterwards, you're going to help me clean the melted sugar out of the copper pots. Lyra reeled back as if struck. Aw, oh, come on, Bonnie. You know I hate that. That's what you get. Bon Bon said, pointing toward the door. Now get your fanny in there. But... That's her first sitting. You'll be doing that a lot on the couch that you'll be sleeping on for the next month. The unicorn made a face as the Hugh man slowly lowered his boombox in defeat. <sighs> she looked over at him and seeing sadness slowly well up in his eyes, gave his cheek a nuzzle. The Hugh man barely reacted, shoulders slumping. When he sniffed, she wrapped a hoof around his shoulders, pulling him towards her. Bon Bon made a face. You. Snorting, she looked away. Human, I'm going to be needing some help in the shop very soon. The human looked up at her. There were tears forming in the corners of his eyes. I would use some pony like you that's really tall and will let me pay the minimum wage without a fuzz if you don't want oh, that job and- I'll take it, he said, perking up. Good. I'll let you know when you start next week. You bring that boombox with you, you're gonna get bon -bon it. Bonbon said, gesturing for Lyra, who was now smiling from ear to ear, to follow her as she began walking back inside the shop. In a flash, the unicorn was side by side with her. You're a big old softie if I've ever seen one, she said, kissing her cheek. A smile came to Bonbon's face, though she tried her hardest to beat it down. Yeah, well, I don't like seeing a stallion cry, no matter how irritating. I'm also going to pay him as little as possible. I promise you that. Lyra just giggled. Softy. Get your cute little butt in there before I kick it up and down the street. The end.